Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on light and color. The topic of this video is the anatomy of a two-point source interference pattern. And we want to know what are the recognizable features of a two-point source interference pattern and what is the language and terminology used to refer to the elements of such a pattern. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed two-point source interference patterns. Since that video is somewhat of a precursor to this one, I left a link to it in the description section if you need to review it. One of the lines of reasonings that we've used throughout this set of video tutorials on light and color is that we observe light interfering constructively and destructively. The fact that light interferes constructively and destructively gives us the belief that light behaves as a wave, and thus we've developed a wave model of light. What we've not done yet in this set of video tutorials is discuss a mathematical model for such light waves. In this video and the two videos that follow, I will be discussing a mathematical model for understanding the, the two-point source interference patterns and eventually associating features of the pattern with the wavelength of the light that causes it. Interference patterns result from the interference of two same frequency waves that are produced by two different sources. Constructive interference occurs at any location where an upward displaced wave meets up with a second upward displaced wave. If the upward displaced waves are both crests, we form supercrests at those particular locations. For a two-point source interference pattern, the supercrests and the supertroughs are always occurring at the same locations. The result is that the medium under goes an oscillation from a maximum positive displacement to a maximum negative displacement and we refer to such locations as maximum. Destructive interference occurs anywhere that a downward displaced pulse meets up with an upward displaced pulse. The result is that the two pulses can cancel each other as long as their displacement from rest is the exactly same amount but in opposite directions. And on an interference pattern, we always observe destructive interference occurring at the same location. We refer to such location as interference minimum. This diagram depicts two sources of circular waves, S1 and S2, and shows the waves spreading out through the surrounding space and interfering with one another. The crests are noted by the thick lines and the troughs are the thinner lines. If I look down the center of the pattern, I'll notice a whole collection of points where crests are always meeting up with crests. And in between these marked points, there are also locations where troughs are meeting up up with troughs. If I look a little bit to the right of this central line of dots, I'll notice another line of dots in which crests are meeting up with crests, and in between those points are troughs meeting up with troughs. Again, if I look to the left, I'll see them again, a whole collection of points of constructive interference of crests with crests and troughs with troughs. Since these dots lie along relatively straight lines, it's common to replace the dots with an actual line. So here's a line replacing all those dots in the middle, and I can replace the dots on the right and the dots on the left with lines as well. These lines represent locations where constructive interference is taking place. Now they're not the only lines of constructive interference. I can look to the right and to the left and find two more lines on each side, give me, giving me a total of seven different lines along which constructive interference is always occurring. Now destructive interference occurs on this pattern as well. It's where a thick line, a crest, meets up with a thin line, a trough, and you'll see one a little bit to the left of the central line that we have on the pattern. These are locations where destructive interference is always occurring. It's not the only location. Here's another line of dots along which destructive interference is taking place. Now as we did for the constructive interference locations, we can do the same for the destructive interference replace the dots with lines so there we see it for one set of dots and for another set of dots but rest assured there's more lines of destructive interference I can draw them in and there we see six green lines showing where crests are meeting up with troughs and destructive interference occurs 
The blue lines on the pattern where constructive interference is occurring are known as antinodal lines, and the green lines where destructive interference is occurring are known as nodal lines. Now I'd like to develop a set of words and numbers to describe each of these lines. First, right down the center of the pattern is a blue line, which is an antinodal line, and we refer to it as the central antinodal line, or the zeroth order antinodal line. I represent it here in the diagram by AN for antinode, subscript 0 for zeroth order. A little bit to the right of this line, we see the first order antinodal line, and then the second order antinodal line, and then the third order antinodal line. I represent these by AN for antinode, and subscripts 1, 2, and 3 for the order of the, of the antinodal line. We see the same thing to the left of the central antinodal line, beginning at the central line, numbering outwards towards the perimeter, we go 0, zero 1. One, two, and three. Now in between every antinodal line is a nodal line, and these nodal lines will be given an order number as well. I'm going to call the first one the first order no nodal line, the second one is the second order nodal line, and the third is the third order nodal line. And I'm going to represent them as N1, N2, and N3, and I see the same thing to the left of the central antinodal line, and they're labeled N1, N2, and N3 as well. Now I'm going to assign numbers to each of these lines. The numbers will be used in a later video when we discuss the mathematical equations relating the pattern to the wavelength of the waves creating the pattern. The first number is going to be for the central antinodal line. The number will be m equals 0 since it's the zeroth order antinodal line. If I go a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left of the central, I'm going to number that line m equal 1 for the first order antinodal nodal line. I'll do similarly for the m equal 2 for the second order antinodal line and m equal 3 for the third order antinodal line. The nodal lines could be numbered a couple of ways. One way to number them is to number them 1, 2, and 3 beginning at the center. The other way to number it, the one that's le least often used and the one I'm going to pick, is to number them with half numbers. So the first order nodal line will be numbered m equal 1 half. The second order nodal lines will be numbered m equal 1.5. And then the third will be numbered 2.5. Now the logic behind the numbering is that if you start at center and go outwards to the right or to the left along the pattern, you'll notice the numbers are always increasing from point five by 0.5 from an antinodal to a nodal and from a nodal to an antinodal. So to summarize, for the antinodal lines, we assign whole numbers, beginning with 0 for the central line and then adding 1 as we go outwards to the right or to the left. And for the nodal lines, we assign them half numbers beginning with a half for the first order nodal line, one and a half for the second order, and two and a half for the third order nodal line. This slide makes for a great summary of the anatomy of a two-point source interference pattern and includes the language that we use to describe the recognizable features along with the numbers that we assign to the antinodal and nodal lines. This would make a great screenshot for you to have or check the link in the description section to our lesson notes where you'll find the same image along with other details. I'm Mr. H, inviting you to subscribe to our channel, give us a like, or leave a question or comment in the comment section of this video. Whatever you do, I thank you for watching.